Hi, welcome back. I'm Bonnie, and this is our member profile series. Uh, we have another, and, and this is a, a probably a favorite of mine, near and dear to my heart, uh, Kyler Johnson. And I think we, we we first met back in Atlanta, right? It's such we a did. long time ago. Yeah, yeah. and we in 2018, I think. Yeah, we had fun. It was really cool. We got to hang out with you, Samantha and I, and a couple of other people. We had a little group and had our, our breakfast every morning, and it was really fun. Okay, so I know you, but they don't know you. Tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Hi, so I'm Kyler Johnson. I'm a principal UI software engineer for a company called SecureWorks. Um, I love what I do. I love Angular. I'm a big fan of the Angular community. Uh, I'm a huge advocate for Linux, and... Uh, uh, if you want to know more about how you can switch to Linux, let me know. I can help you. Uh, That's so great. But uh, yeah, I, I just I'm really excited about dev stuff. Everything to do with coding, I just I absolutely love it. It took over my life, and um, I'm so glad that it did. And I'm so glad for all the wonderful people it's allowed me to meet. So. I think this I see this reminds me why I liked you so much right off the bat when I met you because you just have this good energy and you just have this like grateful attitude that I love and it's just helpful it's it's happy and it's contagious and it's just fun and you also have a beautiful family thank you I think so but I'm probably biased in that <laughs> okay so uh let's start at the beginning did you ever have a time when you started out that you didn't think you were cut out to be a developer did you ever did you struggle when you started did you did it come naturally for you how did your how did your coding journey begin oh absolutely I struggled so I'm self-taught. I've never taken a CS class in my life. Um, so I basically started with HTML and CSS on uh, teamtreehouse.com <laughs> uh, back in the day. And uh, basically just took a course, how to make a basic website. I was like, this is kind of fun. So I just kind of kept going with it. Started learning JavaScript, got really frustrated. I'm like, I don't get this. Like, uh, but uh, it's one You're of those- You're not like, the only one. Yeah, it requires you to think differently. Uh, and I had to learn how to think differently. Um, so there was this period of time where I just like, I'm the type of pro uh, person where when I encounter a problem, I can't just let it go. I have to figure it out or it bothers me. Um, so like I just kept at it and kept at it. And before long, like I look back at my old projects, which in my opinion, it's very important to keep all of your projects, even the ones you're not proud of because in a few months, you go back to them, you're like, wow, I can't believe I struggled with that because it's so simple now. Uh, without but that- But it's good, it shows your progress. It is, without that frame of reference, it's easy to feel like, well, I'm not making any progress. I'm never gonna make it in this career. And uh, there were a lot of times where I almost gave up. And if it wasn't for encouragement from my wife to just keep going, I may have. And she believed in me even when I didn't. So um, that, w that really helped me. And that's amazing. I, I ended up pushing through and, uh, and I found myself in a wonderful, wonderful career that changed my life, changed our lives. And it's just been, you know, it's a, I, I am very grateful to do what I do and have have the people in my life that I have that encouraged me the way that they did. And, uh, you know, I just I love what I do. I don't feel like I work a day in my life. That's so great. Okay, uh, I want to talk about, uh, I want to go to the next question, but I want to go back real quick. What do you mean when you say you have to learn to think differently before it started to like click in your head? So it, it's easy to think about, okay, I want to build this and then get overwhelmed because your capabilities don't meet your expectations. So like you think of all these cool apps or like this, this cool website you want to build and then you start getting into it and you're like, you have no idea where to even start. And when you're a beginner, uh, you don't even know the right things to Google in order to find what you need yet. Um, so uh, there's a few things that help me with that. And one is just researching, changing, uh, changing the word choice when I'm searching things uh, or listening to podcasts. So I had a long commute and I listened to podcasts every day, all day, all, like through my commute and everything. And uh, that exposed me to a lot of different concepts that were out there that I then Googled and then learned about. And I didn't learn super in depth. I just became aware that those things were out there. And that awareness is allowed, that awareness of knowing like, you know, hey, there's Moment.js out there that helps with, you know, date conversions and that sort of thing. Um, for example, that's just one example. Um, 
when I was dealing with dates and it was difficult and I didn't know where to go, but because I knew about moment JS, I didn't know how to use it or whatever, but I knew that it was out there. It existed if I needed it. So just stuff like that helped me understand how to Google, how to research to find the answers that I want. And that just takes, that takes a little bit of time. And, you know, and everybody, tenacity. you got to be a little stubborn to make it as a developer. Absolutely. And I, I'm pretty sure I have some people that will attest to my stubbornness. <laughs> well, it seems to serve you well. You've, it's got you this far. Okay, so the next question I think you might have already answered. Did anyone help you in a significant way? And it sounds like your beautiful wife. And, sure. and you guys are still together going strong. We are. We have our first child. She encouraged me and uh, to and believed in me even when I didn't. Um, we were going through some financially difficult times then. And uh uh, now, because of her encouragement and because of my uh, career traje trajectory, we uh, thankfully are not going through hard times anymore. Uh, That's so but, good. Uh, there was a guy named Philip Hancock who uh, gave me my first opportunity as a developer. And uh, he took a chance on me because I didn't know enough to be productive yet. Uh, he took a big chance on me. So about seven months after I started learning to code and uh uh, he and uh, his team helped level me up, essentially, and I became a pretty good developer from there. And uh, and then from there, I met a guy named Josh Oppenheim, who, you know. And, oh, I remember Josh from Atlanta. Yeah, so he... Shout out to Josh Oppenheim. He's fun. Oh, yeah. So, he, like, he actually took some difficult concepts for me and, like, explained them to me and helped me kind of understand how these things worked and... um. And kinda, he was not an Angular developer when I met him. Is he now drinking the Kool Aid? Uh, he likes Angular. He's he's dope. He's he's been in the Angular ecosystem for a little while. Knows a little bit about it, but he's more of a back end guy. So yeah, uh, I know he's working over at this dot now. Yeah, yeah. He he loves Angular, loves React, but um, what he uh, what he really loves to do is back end type stuff like GraphQL and Node and stuff like that. And he's very good at it, very knowledgeable in JavaScript and stuff like that. So uh yeah, he uh uh but he really helped me understand some some of the more difficult concepts. And there was this period of time at this point in time, I was still in the stage where when I wanted to learn something new, I had to go look up tutorials on it. Uh, docs were just still too overwhelming and there were too many buzzwords I didn't know back then or concepts that I didn't understand. He helped me bridge the gap to where I could read the docs and understand something, um, which has been, you know, pretty instrumental. So um, he was a big help also. And then uh, at my last company, uh, there was an architect named Jim Moore. And no matter how busy he was, he uh, he never he always took the time to explain difficult concepts, why he made the architectural decisions he made. And uh, I worked for with him for a couple years and uh, he really helped me level up my like architectural ability, the way I think about uh, design systems across an organization and across teams. Um, without, without any of these people, I wouldn't be where I am today. That's so great. This is one of the things that I love so much about you, Kyler, because you have so much gratitude in you. And I think it just it just breeds happiness, you know. <coughs> I love it. Uh, what do you listen to when you code? So do you have a programming playlist? I do. So I, I kind of listen to different things based on my mood. So um, like sometimes when I just when life is crazy, you know, uh, and I just need to calm down in order to focus. I like to listen to uh, Skyrim ambience, you know, just like the ambient music that plays in the background when you're playing. That is really good music on a video game. It's so relaxing, especially the nighttime ambience. So I'm just like, I'm relaxing so I can concentrate. And I'm then, writing that down because that's a good tip. Yeah. And there's one on YouTube for like, if you have freemium, you can listen to it for like 10 hours straight without, uh, you know, without commercials or anything. So it's, uh, wow. it's really good. And then sometimes when, like I got to get amped up. I'm like ready to go. I'm like, let's, let's do this. Uh, let's crank out some code. I, uh, I like to listen to Mr. Robot soundtrack. So, <laughs> That's a good soundtrack too. This and is, then, these are good tips. And then if neither one of them are kind of in the, 
or if I'm not feeling either one of those, it's usually like I love to listen to thunderstorms or the sound of rain. Oh wow! So well, that's I live in the Netherlands now. I get that a lot. Just <laughs> open the window. I love it. Yeah, I have an I have a playlist for like waking up when I'm tired. I have a playlist for like mellow stuff, and then I have an instrumental for when I really need to focus. And it's it's very interesting um, what people listen to when they code because it's really different and it it's just tells a little bit about them, you know. Oh yeah. Okay, do you have a strategy or strategies for helping you focus on the days when you're just really not feeling it or if you're working on something tedious or difficult? Do you have any strategies for helping on those days? Sure. So I like to use the Pomodoro technique. So uh, it helps me stay focused when I focus intently for, let's say, 20 minutes. And then I'll get up and walk around for five minutes, do some stretches, uh, you know, talk to my wife for a minute, uh, go hug my daughter, stuff like that, and then come back to it. And then if I give my mind a break on something that's just really tedious or something I'm not really looking forward to, um, then I find that I'm able to focus better and get a little bit more done that way despite taking more breaks. I agree. I love the pond. That's probably the the most uh, popular that a lot of people do. And I, I it took me a long time to learn it, and I wish that I had – really figured that out sooner in my development career. Cause I didn't really start doing Pomodoros until like the last couple of years, but I've been developing way before that. And there were sometimes it's hard, you know, it's hard to, on those days when you've got stuff to do, but you're just not feeling it. It's, and most of the time it's not a problem, but sometimes it's just good to have those strategies for when you need them. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, what is your angular story? When did you get started with angular? So I first started learning angular one in 2015 and uh, did some cool things with that. Worked on a little bit of a, a Angular 1 Firebase, Angular Fire project for a little bit there and uh, uh, didn't get super deep into Angular 1 at the time uh, because I guess that was 2016, not 2015. But uh, you know, when Angular 2 came out, I was, I was definitely plugged in. I was waiting for it. The day it came out, I started playing around with it. And uh, me too. I had an Angular 2 app actually in production that helped support like two or three weeks later. Um, wow. So, so you was, were an early adopter. Yeah. So this was just an internal website. We had like these handheld scanners that were in the field and they were like, they just periodically threw errors. Uh, and, uh, but every error that they threw could be fixed remotely. So our support guys were having trouble going through and, um, they were having trouble getting those in real time. So uh, we set up a uh, Firebase Angular Fire. We put in some uh, some code in the, um, they were Windows CE devices. So they basically, whenever they had an error, they just shot it up to the Firebase uh, database we had set up. And uh, we read those real time in on our uh, Angular 2 app. So I built that um, way back in 2016. I was super excited for Angular 2 and, um, it felt really organized and structured to me. So I was still new in my career then too. So that really helped me kind of stay on track. Uh, and since then I started during that process, I got into it and started listening to uh, Angular Air and uh, uh, just like the community was just really awesome around, um, around Angular. So I, uh, the community is what kind of what kept me there. And I've just, I've been a big fan of Angular ever since you, every time I had the opportunity, I used Angular, I pushed for it everywhere. And, uh, um, everything I've built pretty much since then has been in Angular unless I had absolutely no choice. Yeah. It's a nice framework. I mean, once I, I think the learning curve is a little bit steep, but once you know how to use it, it's just so nice. Oh yeah. The biggest thing for me that was, uh, the learning curve of, uh, RxJS. The, yeah, uh, me too. Data composition and data flow. You have to think about it differently uh, with RxJS. But once you do, it's once you wrap your head around that, and it took me a while. But once I did, it was like, it was so much simpler. Yeah, uh, I think it's really visual. It helped me a lot when the whole marbles came out and there started being like visual. Uh, I think it was like learn RxJS or there's, you know, all the different, it's like, it's the marble diagrams that show the uh, marble diagrams, basically. It really oh, yeah. helped me to understand and wrap my head around it so much when I started seeing those marble diagrams. Oh yeah, me too. I think that's the, that's the trick for a lot of the more abstract concepts. Those, you know, if you can't really see what's going on 
under the hood to have a diagram to understand like this goes here and, and it just it helps so much oh yeah okay uh what is your favorite thing to nerd out over what do you really like working on so that's a hard one for me because i nerd out over almost everything i feel like um so anytime i'm working in angular i'm like super happy uh i love i love optimizing in grx so uh like if you have a complex ngrx implementation i love finding ways to optimize that um and uh limiting the number of change detection cycles that fire and uh stuff like that that kind of that kind of stuff around change detection change detection strategies and um component design, reusable component design, that kind of stuff, optimization, not for just for user experience or performance, but also for dev experience. I love that kind of thing. That's uh, that's probably what I nerd out over the most. That's so great. That's actually pretty challenging for a lot of people. Exactly what you just said is something that some people struggle with. So it's still challenging, maybe, for me, but I enjoy it. <laughs> maybe as you have time, you can, uh, we'll see you in the community doing a couple of uh, tutorials and meetups about this, because this is something that you're passionate about but also it's it's tricky to do well yeah i feel like there's always a trade-off if if you get really good at one uh there's there's kind of a balance you have to find i think but um yeah i would love to uh get more involved in the community and talk about this stuff but uh you know why no life and stuff like that kind of makes that difficult right now but uh when she's a little when my daughter she's uh about a year and a half for anybody who doesn't know and she's uh She's uh, adorable some days, but she is adorable, but she's a handful some days. And, um, my wonderful wife is, she's such a warrior. She, uh, she chases our child around all day and, uh, somehow still manages to, uh, cook these amazing meals. I'm super spoiled. Uh, <laughs> now yeah. I'm hungry, Kyler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't but, had lunch yet. So I, when, torture me. when I'm done working, I, uh, yeah, I try to help her out as much as possible. So um, yeah, well, that's understandable. You gotta the family is important. Oh especially yeah, especially you have such a such a great family. When she's a little older, I definitely hope to have uh, uh, some more time to dive back into community type stuff. I still write blogs. Um, I've been writing blogs for in depth dot dev. Uh, so um, I'm working on my next one, but you know, along and along with family stuff. You know, I don't get them out as quickly as I'd like, but. That's uh, okay. Well, I would love to see you on some meetups once your uh, schedule opens up more, because I just think that you're really like, I, I think that you're a good writer, but I also think that you like, it doesn't all come out in the articles, you know, and sometimes it's just so good to have. And, and like I said, that's why I, I started the series. Cause I want people to like, see like who you are, because I think you're so fun and it just doesn't come across on the internet. Like how just, you just have this good energy that I really like. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I'd you're welcome. That. Okay. So we talked about what you like working on. Uh, what do you struggle with? Do you have like a kryptonite? What's your kryptonite? Uh, I would say, um, this is more of the back end type stuff, but, uh, I, I've worked in places where a lot of the logic were baked in, was baked into SQL queries, um, or stored procedures. And uh, I am not a big fan of SQL. Um, I like object relational mappers. <laughs> and uh, I like to let them do the work for me, except for, uh, and I like all of the business logic to be in uh, in a backend application that can be unit tested and scaled horizontally. So uh, C writing SQL and stored procs, have always, has, I'm not very good at it. And it's always kind of been my, um, something I really hated to do. <laughs> That's all right. You don't have to live like that, but you yeah. don't have to do that anymore. Or you still have to do that. Sometimes you got to suffer through it. Uh, no, not anymore. That was, uh, that was at a previous company that, you know, they just, uh, they were trying to move in the right direction and, uh, it's just, there's a lot of code, a lot of legacy stuff that they have to support and maintain business continuity. So, uh, you know they're they're kind of trapped by a tech that there but they're they're trending in the right direction they're moving away from it but um still a lot there that we have to touch. i remember when i first got the somebody gave me a rest api and i got to just 
query the rest api and i didn't have to write sql queries anymore and i was so happy i was like this is so cool this rest api it was the coolest thing and then i learned graphql a couple years ago and i was like this is the new coolest thing oh yeah so, yeah i have not personally written a sql query in a really long time but i remember we've, we've evolved since then that's so great oh yeah Okay, so uh, how about work? How do you define job satisfaction as a developer? So uh, I think- and are you satisfied as your job? I am very satisfied. My company, SecureWorks, is amazing. We're all fully remote. Uh, of course, I think most people are now because of COVID, but um, the uh, it's incredible how well they maintain the collaborative culture. You feel connected to people, even though we're all fully remote like all over the United States, really. And then how some, do you do that? How do you, how do you feel connected? What is the uh, secret? We have what we call water cooler meetings, uh, once a week in the mornings where we just kind of get together and hang out. And then we have like, uh, um, we have kind of like a hangout in the afternoons, um, toward the end of work, uh, where everybody just kind of drinks a beer or whatever, and just kind of hangs out and talk we all meet up virtually and just talk and stuff like that. So uh, it helps to be connected that way. And then everybody's just so approachable. You need to talk to somebody about something and you get on a call with them and uh, like you talk about what you need to talk about. And then like you, you end up just having a conversation like you would in an office about, you know, their kids or what they're doing or, um, you know, just stuff like that. Like that really facilitates human connection. And uh, my company secure Works, is really good about that. So with job satisfaction, I think that's a big part of it. This company culture, feeling like you're connected, like you're included. Um, and if you feel that way, I think it's important to make sure that you're contributing to that and helping everyone else feel included also. So uh, that way everybody feels at home. I think that's if everybody concentrates on making everyone feel welcome, everyone feel at home, everyone feel included, I think uh, – that's a big part of job satisfaction because it creates a culture where everybody's just so comfortable uh, and it really feels like a family. And then the other part of it is, uh, I, th I mean, I think you have to be interested in what you're working on. So we create a, uh, a product for uh, cybersecurity professionals, security analysts to uh, help investigate security events um, on company servers. So, the cybersecurity space, there's so much there and it's so interesting to me. Um, so like gaining a lot of domain knowledge in that space is something that's really cool and something that just kind of organically happens because we're building a tool for them to use, right? So you kind of have to know a little bit of what they know. Um, so, uh, so yeah, company culture, um, making sure you feel included and uh, be interested in the product that you're, working on and the technology that you're using, I think are all big things for job satisfaction. I think it's really interesting what you said about the water cooler and the happy hour hangouts, because I do not see a lot of this in companies. And I talk to a lot of people and I see right now, especially with COVID and the quarantine, that there's that that is such a good idea. And I really feel like it would make such a big difference because this is something like, and again, this is one of the reasons why I started this, this uh, interview series is because a lot of people are very isolated and, and people are struggling with that right now all over the world. And I just wanted to get people to turn on their cameras and start to kind of get to know each other a little bit. And it sounds like uh, they're doing that at SecureWorks. Is that what, what the company's called? Yep. That's amazing. And it, and it, how, so how do you feel? I mean, I think it's a great idea because I, I really, I, cause you know me, right. I'm very social, but do you feel like that? Uh, and, and I kind of know the answer for myself, but I just want to ask anyway, because I actually talk about this specifically in my architect training about communication between teams and what happens to the code if it's bad. And this is, and I actually had the week four this morning and we like went back to that at the end of the talk and said, I really want to reiterate this point. Your teams need to be communicating with each other. The humans need to be able to talk to the other humans. And it sounds like not only are you guys like having those conversations, but having a, a get together with, um, without an agenda where you can just have an organic, you know, how are you doing? How's it going? So then, um, because I think some teams are just so busy and it's like work, 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 work. And you just like get your head down and, and work as fast as you can. And there's this pressure, but then you don't actually have that social interaction, especially because we're all remote. So 
from your perspective, does that make a difference in the actual code that your team produces? Yeah, I think so. I think it uh, takes a lot of pressure off of people and not just that, but like the way you have to count on your teammates to do what they do and stuff like that. It's a, uh, uh, and it also, it always helps what the water coolers and the happy hours do is uh, they take the connection between you and your coworkers and they move it beyond professional. So, um, so that, like, it's almost like an opportunity to for them to be not your coworker but your friend at that point. So uh, that's really missing these days. It is, and it's like a it's a deeper the connection goes a little bit deeper. So instead of like reaching out to your coworker about this this thing you're working on now, it's just like you're reaching out to so and so who uh, you know, and you know it's Tuesday, so she has to take her daughter to swim practice or something like that. Uh, so you, you better uh, you better um, meet up with her sooner rather than later because she's going to have to go early. Um, and it's not just around stuff like that, but it's like it's that connection. It's just like, hey, I got this going on. I'm working on this. I need this uh, from you whenever you can get it. Uh, no rush or anything. It changes the way you interact. You feel more comfortable with one another. You understand how to take one another. Um, and uh, it reduces the it reduces the chance that something you say might be taken in the wrong way, like through chat, because so much is lost through chat. Right. So, um, especially when everybody's stressed out. Yeah. But when you know the person and you're like, you have that deeper connection with them, it's like, Oh, I know they didn't mean that. How it sounds. You interpret those messages differently. It's like, or you can say, listen, you, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. How long have you worked there? Uh, about five months, six months, maybe. All right. Uh, All right. And it's, but yeah, it's going really well. Oh, yeah. We're and using, are they still hiring? They are. We have, last I heard, we have seven open, open recs. Wow. Um, we're on Angular 10. We're using NX. Uh, we're doing a lot of cool stuff with DataViz with D3. Um, you know, NGRX implementations. And uh, we, uh, we're we getting a Scully Docs site going. Uh, so wow. a lot of exciting things going on. And, uh, like I said, I work with a lot of wonderful people, a lot of very, very, very smart people. And, uh, uh, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. So. Well, uh, we have, we're, we're almost out of time for now, but, uh, if it's okay with them, we can schedule another interview and talk more because I, 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 I mean, it just sounds like such a cool company culture and the fact that they're hiring, uh, it would be interesting to see like what kind of positions they're hiring and what kind of stuff they're looking for. And so, uh, if it's okay with them, we'll schedule another interview and just talk about that specifically. Uh, we'll interview you uh, again and, and get some more information about that. But for now, uh, just one last question, and we're going to wrap this up, and then uh, hopefully we can we can schedule another one because that uh, that just sounds like and the fact that they're hiring, I think we should just have a whole conversation about that if it's okay with them. Uh, okay, so last question for today: What are you working on now? What are you excited about next? What's next for Kyler Johnson? Um. So I guess uh, tech wise, I, I'm just like diving into things that I haven't really had time to dive into as much. So uh, I'm learning a lot more about um, unit testing in Angular, different ways to do it. Uh, I've been playing around a lot with uh, Observer Spy, uh, test library. I was going to say, you know, you know, you need to go to spend some time with Shai Resnick. Oh yeah, Shy Resnick is awesome, and the stuff he's doing is awesome. And for anyone who doesn't know, Observer Spy is an alternative to Marbles that I feel like is a lot simpler to use to test your observables. And then uh, I've been uh, a coworker of mine, uh, Ryan Timms, put me on this uh, um, this library called Shallow Render that uh, basically uh, stubs out your uh, component for you. You don't have to write all the code, all the like. Uh, all of the test bed code for your uh, for your Angular component tests. Um, it's called shallow bed. Shallow render. Shallow render. Yeah, that sounds cool. So uh, it does all that for you. So you don't have to write all that boilerplate uh, test bed stuff. You just do the you know you do your before your before each, and then you write your uh, tests and make your assertions and stuff like that. It's um, it's really cool. It saved a lot of time too. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. 
Well, this has been a delightful call. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. I haven't seen you. I haven't actually seen you face to face in a long time. So I'm really glad that we got to catch up and uh, good on you. I'm so happy to see you happy. I'm really glad that your family is doing well and you and your wife are doing well. And I'm really happy that you have such an awesome job. And uh, it sounds like a really great place to work. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the questions I have for you today. Thank you again for spending this time with me and answering all my questions. And I hope to talk to you soon and often. Absolutely. Great to talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye.